Okay, so we're continuing examples from 11.8. So we're trying to find the interval of convergence, and I'm going to show you um, two oddball cases, okay? So say you've got this series, n equals 0 to infinity of n factorial times x to the n, all right? So what is my a n term here? It's n factorial x to the n. Um, a n plus 1 is n plus 1, parentheses, factorial, x to the n plus 1, okay? So when I take, when I run the ratio test, and I take the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n, what do I get? I get the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1 and factorial x to the n plus 1, over n factorial x to the n. All right, now, some magic is going to happen here, people. A lot of cancellation is gonna go on. What am I talking about? Well, let me do some scratch work over here on the side. n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two all the way down, right? So n plus one factorial is n times, n plus one times n times n minus one all the way down to three, two, one, okay? And then that's divided by what? N factorial, which is N times N minus one, all the way down um, to three, two, one. So what happens here? This N kills that N, this N minus one kills that N minus one, the dot, dot, dots kill each other, three and three, two and two, one and one. A lot of bloody mess going on. So what happens at the end when the dust settles? These cancel, and all I'm left with is this n plus 1 here. So this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1. Now, what else do I have? If I have x to the n plus 1, this is x to the n times x to the 1, and that's over x to the n. And so what happens? My x to the, uh-oh, get out of that. x to the n's cancel. And so all I'm left with is just my x, okay? So I'm just left with my x, and that's just over 1. You don't even have to write over 1 if you don't want to. So once again, um, when I do this, I can take out the x part because this is a limit in terms of n. So the x is kind of like a constant. So I take the limit as n goes to infinity of that absolute value of n plus 1. Now, what do I know here? What do I know here? Well, this is like saying absolute value of x times, well, as n goes to infinity of n plus one, that's infinity, right? That's just taken off. So the only value of x that I can plug in to where this is less than one is gonna be x equal to zero, okay? Therefore, x equals 0 is the only value of x for which the series n equals 0 to infinity of n factorial x to the n converges. Okay? Now, if I have x to the n, where's my x minus c? Well, if you think about x to the n, x to the n is really like x minus 0 to the n, right? You see that? You see how we can rewrite it here? So technically, we're centered at 0 here, okay? So that that is kind of hidden in there, but don't, don't let that sneak up on you. If you don't see it, if you don't see that x minus c there, it's centered at 0, right? So the only place that it converges is at the center of the interval. So when I look at it, x equal to 0 is the only place it converges. And so my, my interval of convergence, all right, it's not really even an interval. The interval of convergence is just a singleton set. It's just x equal to 0, so 0 is the only place where we converge, okay, just at that single dot. What is my radius of convergence? Well, how far do I go out this way in my interval? Well, I don't go out at all. So the radius of convergence is 
is r equal to zero. So the radius of convergence is zero there. All right, so if it only converges at a single point, then your radius for the interval is zero. All right? Now, that's one oddball case. Let me give you the other extreme. So say I wanna find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence, that's supposed to be at R, okay? For the series n equals zero to infinity of four x raised to the n over three n factorial, three n factorial, okay? Hmm, how am I gonna do this one? Well, let's, let's try it out, see if we can do it. So a n is equal to 4x raised to the n over 3n factorial, right? Okay, so, the, so, so what is a n plus 1, right? So that's going to be 4x to the n plus 1 over... you got to be careful. This is where it gets kind of difficult, okay? So don't let this trick you up, especially on your test, right? So this is n plus one in parentheses factorial. So what does that equal? That's four x to the n plus one over, what's in parentheses, three n plus three factorial. Do you see that? That's my a n, this is my a n plus one, this is my a n plus one here. So if I'm gonna do the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n, this is gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity of what? 4x raised to the n plus one over three n plus three factorial divided by four x to the n over three n factorial, right? You gotta be careful because that three n, it's all inside that uh, factorial there in parentheses, okay? So keep change flip. It's gonna simplify some stuff for us. I'm gonna get 4x to the n plus one over three n plus three factorial multiplied by three n factorial over what? Over, I don't know, what is that gonna be? That's gonna be, um, excuse me. That's gonna be, uh, 4x to the n. Okay, had a brain fart there. All right, so these cancel. What am I left with? I'm just left with a 4x to the 1 power here, okay? Same logic that we used previously up here to get rid of the 4x to the n part. Now, this is where it's tricky, okay? looking at my factorials. So 3n factorial is equal to 3n times 3n minus 1 times 3n minus 2, dot, 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 all the way down, okay? But the denominator starts at 3n plus 3, and then what? I subtract 1 from it to get the next one. 3n plus 2, 3n plus 1, 3n, and then 3n minus 1, dot, 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 all the way down. So what ends up killing each other? The 3n's, the 3n minus 1's, and then everything in the dot, dot, dots, okay? So what am I left with here? In the numerator, a 1, and the denominator looks like a third-degree polynomial. Um, I do not need to multiply that out. That's a mess, right? Just leave it like it is. So this is limit as n goes to infinity of what? Well, it's 4x over, because remember this cancel, and then I have 3n plus 3 times 3n plus 2 times 3n plus 1, okay? Now, what can I do? This 4x has nothing to do as n goes to infinity, so I'm gonna pull it out front. 4x times the limit as n goes to infinity of what? One over 
all this stuff right here. Don't waste your time multiplying it out. No reason to, because what do you know? This limit is actually going to zero, okay? Now, what values of x can I plug in here to make this less than zero? I mean, sorry, less than one, that's the goal, right? So what values of x can I plug in? I can plug in any value of x that I want, any real number I want, because if I multiply by zero, that answer, that real number is gonna become zero, right? So this is true for all x, for all x that are real numbers, okay? So any real number x is gonna work here. So the interval of convergence is what? Anything negative infinity to positive infinity. Any real number I can think of, or I can write R, okay? If you want to do set theory, I'm okay with that. And the radius of convergence, R, is equal to, well, if my interval goes, you know, C's in the middle, right? I'm centered, I think this one is centered at zero. If my interval of convergence goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, then how big does my radius need to be? My radius, R, needs to be pretty big, right? It needs to be infinity, too. It's got to span the width of the real number line, okay? So my answer here, the interval of convergence is all real numbers, and the radius of convergence is infinity, okay? So I showed you the two oddball cases. If we don't get just something where it's strictly some absolute value of some, you know, uh, polynomial or whatever inside, and I have to solve for x, um, then it's going to be, you know, if it's your answer is 0 less than 1, then no matter what x w you pick, it works, okay? But if your answer, you know, you take your limit, and this thing is diverging, okay, it diverges when, as n goes to infinity, then the only value for x you can plug in that's going to make this thing not diverge is if you multiply every term in your uh, series by zero, and then that makes it less than one. So the only place it works, you know, is at your center, x equal to c. Now, x equal to c here, our c was centered at zero. We talked about that. We centered this at zero. That's why x equals zero there. So whatever your x equal to c is, is the only place that you're going to converge. Your radius of convergence is r equal to zero always for this scenario. And the interval of convergence is just the, the x equal to c value. So here my c was zero. Okay, guys, that covers.